Welcome back to Theme Park Wizard. In today's video, we're going to take a look at Tokyo Disney Sea and Fantasy Springs. Disney shared a whole bunch of concept art for their new the new land, opening up with four new attractions, and they showed a sneak peek of all four attractions. So we're going to rank the attractions, and we're going to go and take us some sneak peeks inside these beautiful, beautiful attractions right now. First on the list is Frozen Ever After, and Frozen Ever After has been replicated in Hong Kong and caught so far. We Tokyo Disney Sea's version is the best version, of course, because it's Tokyo, but also it has a different storyline than the rest of the attractions and more animatronics that are not just uh, projected screen faces, but actual screen faces and more just animatronics and effects in general. Right here, you see this beautiful animatronic of Elsa standing in the castle doorways looking absolutely gorgeous right there. And then here is another image of Elsa and Anna skating with a mini, oh, with a baby um, Fen and other, um, other show scenes right here with these beautiful trees, look at those trees, fireworks, or icicles, sorry, formation, of forming trees, and this just scene is absolutely beautiful, all anim animatronics, and all practical sets. You can find some POVs of this attraction online, but you can see in the POV that that's, uh, those icicles right there, that's actually an effect, the icicles sprout up from the ground, what else is doing her magic, and that's that effect is what's showing here with these beautiful projection mapped icicles as well as practical effects. Um, and with the castle guard there standing frightened, the story play continues to play out with you know, scenes from the movie, both Frozen 1 and 2, and uh, again with beautiful uh, practical sets, animatronics mixed with projection mapping, usually for the magical effects. And here is, uh, again, a baby Anna from the story, a retelling of the story, going up to Elsa's room to figure out what her big sister is going to do. Looking at Sven, look at this impressive animatronic Sven, and, um, oh my god, I forgot it, Kristoff. There you go, Kristoff and Sven, right at this scene on the sleigh. This version does not have the uh, roller coaster version that Hong Kong has, which is basically the uh, uh, plus up version of the Gadget Go Coast from Toontown. This uh, still has uh, Sven and Kristoff in a lovely, lovely scene here. More sets of uh, practical animatronics. Look at this beautiful scene. Look how massive. Look, another thing, the scale of these scenes. This is a huge show building. The scale is incredible. This ride also, just like the other versions, does go forward and backwards in the boat and has a forward shop as well as a forward shop as well. But I think these impressive scenes and animatronics. Look, here's the Into the Unknown or the Let It Go sequence right here. This is the, one of the sequences where you actually get pushed back by Elsa's magic and he goes and pushes you down the backwards drop right there, um, which is pretty cool. So, yeah, Close and Ever After, I certainly give that attraction an A because that looks absolutely gorgeous. Now, this next one, Peter Pan, I'm going to give it a B and I'll tell you why because. I'm not so sure about this. This one looks like the Peter Pan, or the uh, Transformers ride system, the Scoop ride system, and it seems like there's also a POV of this one. There's it just goes from screen to screen to screen to. Screen. There's some you know, practical sets and large scale sets like these. You see the trees, but then it's helping it. Then the main action, those like Peter Pan on the screen, and you fly with him in this Scoop vehicle. The animation, I'm not so sure about either. I, I don't know how you make it better. Because it's just, uh, you know, it's a 3D animation or CGI. But, yeah, it just seems going from screen to screen to screen. Uh, more like more like Transformers, less like Mickey Minnie's Runaway Railway, which is like kind of a mix of screens and practice, that 2.5D. The other thing, this is full 3D. You have to wear 3D glasses for this. And I just don't like 3D attractions in general. But, yeah, see, screen to screen. Uh, and then you fly, uh, really reminiscent of Transformers, and uh, just not my favorite. But, I mean, the show building, the exterior queue, interior queue, and the show building look fantastic. And the rider vehicles look great, too. And the animation does not look terrible. But, yeah, just not my kind of... Again, going back to the show building, look at that. The, lo the um, Lost Boys Island, or Neverland right there, um, looking absolutely gorgeous. And the show building, the exterior queue kind of reminds me of... Rise of the Resistance kind of going into the caves, which is kind of going indoor, outdoor until you go into the caves and you go deeper inside the mountain there. And I love the the uh, the sail, the ship sail, my attraction marquee. I think it, all that looks absolutely gorgeous. And again, 
I, I would definitely ride this ride if I was there, but I feel like this is certainly my least favorite or least anticipated of the four attractions, but it's still not bad by any means. Yeah, now, now we're going to go to an A-plus attraction. This might be my favorite, definitely a sleeper hit of the land, and that is Rapunzel, a.k.a. Tangle. The Tangle attraction, look at this, wow. And this is so cool, this is why this is the thumbnail for this video, because wow, look at this, this is a boat ride, just a slow-moving book report type boat ride, um, like Small World or Pirates. Look at all those lanterns, this is straight from the movie, and you have the Rapunzel and Flynn animatronics on the boat there. This is a beautiful scene, I'm sure it'll be accompanied by Rapunzel singing, some great music, and it, it might just bring tears to people's eyes, this is how good this scene is. More scenes from the movie, here's Rapunzel swinging along the trees from right oh, here. This is, again, kind of in the moment when she not just first meets Flynn, but when they're just venturing outside of the tower. Um, fun fact, outside or in, this, in the mini land, in this section of the mini land, before the queue, they actually have Rapunzel on an animatronic, a full-fledged, high-quality animatronic of Rapunzel singing from her tower outside, like just walking around the land, which is incredible. Um, so that is a sight to see. And here's the Snuggly Duckling, um, which, too bad, I don't know if you can actually, if they made the dining location, I don't think they did, but they definitely should make a Snuggly Duckling bar and lounge or somewhere in a Disney park, because it looks absolutely gorgeous. Um, it'll be fantastic, beautifully in theme, and look at these beautiful sets. It does kind of remind me of, like, Splash Mountain with these kind of rock works. Um, the interiors of Splash Mountain and probably Tiana's by Adventure will kind of use these, um, the grass and these, these kind of cartoony rock works here. It makes looks absolutely beautiful. And of course, our favorite chameleon. I honestly haven't seen the movie Tangle. Well, I've saw it this year, actually, but I just put, forgot his name, but he is a very funny character in the movie. And here's another outdoor scene. This is cool because, again, it's very small world-like. More small world than pirates. In fact, it has outdoor scenes as well, like actual outdoor scenes. And here's, and here's some animatronics outdoors as well, of Flynn and his horse as you put Puyo into the show building or out of the yeah, I think this looks like Puyo into the show building. The beautiful water ball waterfalls. This reminds me of that scene from Raider Swings Racers. Looks absolutely beautiful. And then there it is. That's Rapunzel right there in her tower. You can see it's hard to see, but her head's kind of peeking out of the window there. And she sings all day. She just sings and you don't even have to go on the ride to see it. This is outside of the ride. You can see it um, from the queue. It's just absolutely gorgeous. This is so cool. Here are bits and pieces of the queue. I love, again, the lantern-style lighting and the banners there. look really, really cool. This is just, again, probably my favorite and most anticipated ride and one of my favorite theme sections of the entire land of Fantasy Springs in general. And, of course, here's the marquee. Look at that. Rapunzel's, Rapunzel's Lantern Festival. And, uh, yeah, it has lanterns. Uh, all throughout the queue. It was going to look gorgeous at night. Yeah, this is going to be a hit, sleeper hit for sure. And the last scene from Rapunzel, look at that. There's the glowy effect from her hair when the phony first touches her hair and it lights up and glows. Um, it looks great. It's funny. I'm sure they're, I'm sure she's in there because it's a book report right, but I haven't seen Mother Gossel. What's her name? Mother Gossel, I think. Oops, sorry, I'm probably mispronouncing that, but I haven't seen her, but I'm sure she'll be an animatronic in this attraction. I can't wait to see what she looks like as well. Moving up to Pixie Hollow. Pixie Hollow, or Tinkerbell's Pixie Hollow attraction. This is a smaller attraction, all outdoors. And you, uh, it's, I think it's called Tinkerbell's Buggies or something like that. Uh, still, I'm going to give this an A plus attraction, or an A attraction. There's no screens, it is all uh, animatronic and animatronics and practical effects, and it reminds me a lot of Bugs Land. Here you are as you go through an ice scene here, and this attraction is, again, kind of hard to sell it because it's outdoors and sunny, but it snows in Tokyo, so when it, the days it snows, uh, yeah, this scene will be really in theme, but now it's nice and sunny, and this picture's up, but it looks pretty great. Um, and there's Tinkerbell right there, probably the only one of the only screens on this attraction. I think it, she actually uses her pixie dust to shrink you down to a fairy, and that just makes everything larger than life. So this one actually might be the beginning of the attraction. If I had to guess, maybe the point where she uses her pixie dust to shrink you down. And this little show scene looks fantastic as well. Here's a whole bunch of giant ladybugs. Again, this reminds me of Bugs Land, again, with the large, uh, with the large leaf and the large, um, the lights, the flower lights, and the large trees and stems. 
uh, definitely homage to a Bugs Land. I wouldn't be surprised if they put something like Heimlich or something in there. Something, some homage to a Bugs Land because it looks fantastic. There's this lovely mouse again. Um, says, happy birthday. Cheese! Say cheese! And this is the love tink. Oh, that's so nice. And you got some, I um, mean, just some beautiful sets here. I mean, look at this. There's a lot of acorns here. So, squirrel certainly lives here. There's an acorn slide, too, which is pretty cool. This is called Crocodile Creek. Um, and this, or, sorry, that must be the acorn section. But then, next must be Crocodile Creek. And yeah, so the official name, and look at this beautiful marquee Tinkerbell, uh, Bugsy, Buggy, Busy, bu busy Buggies. Hard to see. Hopefully, they have like a light up effect on the um, marquee there because it is hard to see the attraction title. But this reminds me of Animal Kingdom too. This whole marquee it almost reminds me of like the tree, the roots of the tree of life, which is really cool. And yeah, so those are your four attractions. I mean, all top tier attractions. Even even though I'm I was hating on Peter Pan a little bit, still gonna be a fantastic attraction and it's certainly an e-ticket attraction, the headliner of the whole land. But honestly, they can all be e-ticket attractions. Which of the four rides did you guys like below? Comment down below. Let me know. Again, my personal favorite is the Rapunzel attraction. But hey, there's four great ones. Let me know down below. And the Fantasy Springs Hotel looks gorgeous as well. They did some first looks of that. Didn't put them in this video. But if you guys want, I'll definitely go ahead and break that down for you in a future video. Make sure to press that like button. Subscribe. And hey, check out my socials down below if you want to contribute to the channel. Make sure to Either become a member, YouTube member, click join button down below and click on my page, subscribe to my Patreon for some rumors, permits, and more. That's patreon.com slash club722. And as always, have a magical day.